No matter which way you look at it, humans are undoubtedly social creatures. Building a strong and cohesive support structure is key to both our individual and collective success. Creating this support structure has shown to decrease stress levels, ease anxiety, boost self-confidence, and even help depression. However, in recent years, social media has replaced the real-world human connection, negatively impacting many individuals, especially our children. I know this may come off as contradictory as I'm presenting a video on the negative impacts of social media via a social media website, but I'd like to start by saying social media is not inherently evil. While it does have its benefits, it's important to remember that social media should never replace real-world human interactions. Back in 2005, when social media was just emerging, only about 5% of the people in the United States were actively utilizing it. According to a specific January 2024 report, approximately 62% of the world's population is now using social media. That's nearly 5 billion people. Of course, certain demographics use social media more than others. And unsurprisingly enough, the demographic that leads social media use is teenagers. A survey conducted by Gallup in late 2023 found that over half of the teenagers in the United States spend an average of 4.8 hours on social media each day. Teenage girls average 5.3 hours, while teenage boys averaged 4.4 hours. That's about a fifth of the day on social media, and that ratio increases when accounting for sleep and school. Operating under the assumption that the average teen sleeps for 6 hours and attends school for 7, that leaves them with 11 free hours each day. So, the average American teenager will spend almost half of their free time not only on their phone, but on social media. While social media most definitely keeps us connected and serves as an excellent medium for self-expression, anything in excess can be detrimental. And excess use is very prevalent among social media users. This excessive use has shown to distort an individual's view on the real world. Far too often, people scrolling through social media tend to become obsessed or jealous of the perception of an individual's life. They forget that social media is not always an accurate representation and that people sharing their glamorous lifestyles are often sharing very precise or doctored moments of their life. This false expectation increases the risk of anxiety and depression, as people look at these images or videos and wonder why they themselves don't have that type of lifestyle. Then there's the addicting aspect of social media. Cognitive neuroscientists have shown that rewarding social stimuli, laughing faces, positive recognition by our peers, messages from our loved ones, activate our dopaminergic reward pathways. Now that everybody has a smartphone, we have a virtually unlimited supply of social stimuli. However, it now comes in the form of notifications from our phones. Texts, likes, retweets, and any other notification trigger our dopamine response, which in turn makes us feel good. When seeking out more dopamine, we constantly check our phones and continue to scroll through our feeds. Another factor leading to increased anxiety among social media users is the fear of missing out, or FOMO. You've likely experienced FOMO yourself and have most definitely observed it by someone you know. Today, people that aren't in the loop with the latest celebrity news, gossip, or random trend run the risk of being shunned by their peers. While being ostracized from a peer group undoubtedly has negative effects on mental health, the idea that you might miss out on something simply because you aren't online can result in similar negative effects. And finally, there's the claim that smartphones are making everyone dumber. A study conducted by the Program for International Student Assessment, or PISA, found that 50% of students got distracted by digital devices and those who were affected scored lower points than those who remained focused. PISA began their international study in the year 2000. They claim that science test scores peaked in 2009 and reading test scores in 2012. Since then, developed countries across the world have performed, quote, increasingly poorly. PISA reported that, quote, no single country showed an increasingly positive trend in any subject. This finding is allegedly an unprecedented drop in performance and was nearly three times as large as any prior change. Since 2012, researchers have continued to track a steep downward trend in student performance. In an attempt to find answers, PISA and the Organization for Economic Development and Cooperation administered a questionnaire to students. This questionnaire asked students how often they were distracted by using digital devices and how often they were distracted by others using digital devices. Unsurprisingly, about 65% of students reported that they got distracted by using digital devices, and 59% said they got distracted by others who were using a cell phone in class. Taking it a step further and studying student test grades showed that those who reported distractions from digital devices scored 15 points lower on their test scores than those who reported the opposite. 
While the PISA study undeniably identified a decrease in overall test levels due to the presence of digital devices, it primarily referred to smartphones as a distraction. One could make the argument that no matter the distraction, exposure to any recurrent distraction could lower student test scores. However, a study published in Nature magazine in June of 2023 highlights the direct correlation between the presence of smartphones and reduced memory retention. The study found that the mere presence of a smartphone resulted in a lower attentional performance. That's right, the fact that a smartphone is near you, even though you're not interacting with it, drastically lowers your ability to focus and retain knowledge. The researchers also concluded that work performance was negatively affected. Specifically, they found that people in the vicinity of a smartphone worked at a much lower pace than those without one. Although we literally have the world's knowledge at our fingertips, it seems we have become too dependent on our cellular devices. We no longer retain the knowledge we learn. We rarely get to know each other beyond the superficial profile images and stories we see online. While a smartphone is unquestionably a great tool, it can also be a great inhibitor.